Lightroom announced a new update yesterday and it has some new features. And so we thought we would get on here and share with you about some of the features that we're seeing and some of the, the things that might actually be helpful to you in your workflow. I will be completely upfront with you and tell you that there are some issues with this new update. I'm still having Lightroom crashes. So um, if it happens during this, well, we'll just roll with it and hopefully it will load back up and we can we can see what's happening with and you can see firsthand that I'm still having that issue. The other issue that we've seen is that people are finding their Lightroom presets are being imported out of order a little bit and that is a known issue that um, Lightroom is working to fix. So I'm hoping within the next couple day or so we will have an update to this. We'll see I guess. Who knows? Because sometimes that's that's hard to know. Um, so let's just let's jump in here a little bit. One of the first things when you update your Lightroom, you're going to notice that you get a little message on your screen that says that Lightroom is updating or changing your presets. And that's something that is going to affect most of you because a lot of you are preset customers and will definitely have some presets in your in your Lightroom catalog. So we've done some research on this. We've been checking on this for the last little bit. Your presets should not be affected by this, but Lightroom is going to adjust um, their location and that's why it's updating them. It's updating their location and their file type. That's something new that they're doing with this update. So it's okay to let it do it. It's just how it's how it's gonna be. Um, a couple of things, it, it won't affect where you install presets. So you can still install presets the way that we've been teaching you for um, a long time. And then you'll still need to shut down your Lightroom once you've installed them and reopen your Lightroom. And when you do that, Lightroom will, will finish that process and convert them and put them where they need to go. So not really something that you necessarily need to be aware of, but it is going to tell you it's doing that when you're updating. And so it's something you should probably be aware of and know that it's not going to ruin anything. It's just changing something. So, um, the next one of the next features that I absolutely love, I think this is fantastic, especially for preset users, and I think you'll all enjoy this, is that now whenever you click on one of your presets, or not even click on, uh, I need to go back, whenever you hover over one of your presets, you will now see a preview in the main window on your image, okay? without clicking on it. You just have to hover over and look at changes. Now we always had that capability up here. We could always hover over our presets and we would see the change up here, but now we see it in the main window. It's fantastic. It, it really is something that probably should have been there all along. And I love those types of updates because that tells me that they're really useful if I feel like they should have been there all the time. So, um, I think you're going to love that. You'll notice that kind of as I just hover over, I can see previews of, of all my presets, what it's going to look like when I click. And I don't even have to click to get that now. So super nice. Um, I love seeing the big view. The next thing that you might notice is that the basic panel over here has a couple of changes. So the first change that you will probably notice is the dehaze slider. We used to just have clarity, vibrance, and saturation down here, and now they've added dehaze. So we've always had this dehaze feature, um, but it was buried in the effects panel. So if you wanted to add dehaze, you had to come down here and likely if you were like me, you had to think for a minute and remember, okay, what panel was dehaze in? So you might even open two panels before you even find it. It used to be down here in effects. But now it's up here in the basic panel and it's just right underneath clarity so you can add dehaze to your images right from the basic panel. And I'm glad that's a really, to me, another just no brainer change. Dehaze was something that a lot of us were starting to use more. It was a really 
um, helpful tool. And so I'm really glad that they moved it to the basic panel. That's really a no brainer to me either. So one of the other big changes and probably the biggest change of this update has to do with these profiles right here. So Adobe has always had profiles. Um, you probably didn't pay attention to them or notice them because of where they were at. They were down here in the calibration panel. And I don't know about you, but this is not a panel I opened hardly ever. So I never came down here really to change my camera profile. Maybe occasionally if I was really having a hard time with an image, I might come down here and play with this. But the calibration panel, that's the bottom panel. That was not a panel that I was, was using on a regular basis. But these profiles were always meant to give you the best starting point possible. That's what they were designed for. So um, these have now been moved up to the basic panel and they're up here at the top. You can see profile and you can see Adobe standard. These profiles, if I click on, well, I've already showed you, this is a little drop down box. This is an older image. So I'm gonna click over here on that profile browser. So did you see what I did here? I went and clicked on these four rectangles here and it opens this profile browser. So profiles were designed also for raw images. They weren't designed for any other type of image, just a raw image. And if I come down here, these are these Adobe raw are the new Adobe um, raw profiles. Right now, this image is showing Adobe Standard. And the reason this one is showing Adobe Standard is this one that is this is one that I've had imported previously. And it used to be that Adobe Standard was the default profile for your images when they were added to Lightroom. Now, from now on, it will be this Adobe Color. And as you can see, as I hover on these, it's changing the profile here in the main window, just like with the presets, which is super nice. I mean, it's nice to have a thumbnail, but it's also really nice to just be able to see how it's applying to your main image. So you can see that it's just a subtle change, a subtle difference. There's a little more color pop, but very, very subtle. And no real color pop to the skin, maybe a touch more contrast than was there before. So these are really designed as starting points and you can hover over these and choose the one you want. And if you're doing a landscape image, this Adobe landscape has a lot more color pop and a little more contrast to the image. Um, Adobe neutral to me, this is very, very, very low contrast and low color. Adobe portrait, you can see that's a very subtle change too. The biggest difference to me between Adobe Portrait and Adobe Color is the care for skin tones. If I come over here on Adobe Color, I see a little bit more change to the skin tones. Then if I click on Portrait, I see a little bit less change to the skin tones. So, and then there's this Adobe Vivid, which adds more color and more contrast. So if you're editing a raw image, you're gonna see this Adobe Raw, you're gonna see your can the camera matching profiles. And these are the profiles that come with your camera that you can, can choose from as well. And you're gonna see something called Legacy. And this is just keeping all the legacy profiles in case you've used those with any of your other images too, so that you know they're still there and still available if you go back to edit one of your images. They don't want your profile to be gone or missing, maybe that you've chosen before. So these legacy ones are just previous ones that they've had and that they want there to be there for you. So when you jump down to this next panel, so these the top ones are all for your raw images. If I click over here on a JPEG image, and let's just give it a second, and hopefully it will not crash. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. Who knows? Um, you'll see that I don't have, this is a JPEG, and I don't have those raw options up here. I do have favorites, and I do have this basic, but I don't have the raw, the raw options anymore. But what both raw and JPEG and, frankly, PSDs, TIFFs, any of those can be at, edited 
with these artistic ones. So these are available not just for raw files. These are available for raw, JPEG, PSD files, TIFFs, whatever. And these are more artistic um, profiles that you can choose to give your image a little bit more of an artistic look. They're still meant as a starting point, so you could still click on these and still then go and make all other adjustments. They're still meant as a starting point, but a little more artistic starting point. And you'll see some of these look a little bit funky maybe. This one, the yellows are just a little bit killer right there. Um, but some of them actually look pretty nice and I think could be a, a decent starting point. So there's an artistic section. There's a black and white section. This has several different black and white options that you could use as a starting point. Just hovering over them so you can kind of see the differences. And you're going to see that some of them work and some of them do not. And, and maybe the same filter that worked on one image isn't going to work on another image. So it's really kind of a look and see, hover over and try type of thing. The modern section. These, they're trying to mimic more modern looks to images, so maybe some more, a little bit more trendy type of look. Um, so as you hover over them, you're going to see that a lot of these are pretty nice um, and could be used as a starting point as well. And then the vintage ones, let's hover down here. We've got a few different ones. There's some very desaturated kind of a color look a little bit there. Just some different, some different looks. And really, you could use any of these as a starting point and probably get a pretty image. The thing that's kind of fun about these profiles as, is that they can be applied, number one, like I said, to any file type. And they can be applied or changed at any time. So they're not going to affect your, if I close this, if I click on one of those um, profiles, it's not going to affect any of my exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, sliders at all. These are completely separate from any of these sliders. So that's kind of a nice feature because you can come back and change these and adjust them um, at any time. So what I haven't even mentioned yet, let's come down here, let's go to modern. We're going to pick one of these. Um, let's kind of pick a really bold one so you can kind of see what's going to happen. I'm going to click on this modern three and look up here what appeared but an amount slider. Seriously. So I can reduce the amount of this effect on my photo from zero all the way up to 200%. So I can click on it and maybe 100 or whatever it was at is not quite right, not quite what I want. I can adjust the amount of this profile added to my photo. Now this is a really nice feature because maybe it's a little bit too much. Maybe it's um, got too much contrast or something that you don't necessarily love, but you can adjust it a little bit and that's really Really nice. This is actually something we have wanted for presets for a long time And it hasn't come to us in presets, but we've kind of got it over here in the profile browser and that's that's nice So these creative profiles in addition to being able to adjust the slider one thing that you I can tell you is if I close this, so I've clicked on this profile modern three, I've adjusted the amount, I'm going to close. I'm still going to see the slider over here in the basic panel. Anyway, hopefully that this has been a little bit helpful. Thank you for being patient with me and not being too upset as I <laughs> just spontaneously decide to get on and, and Facebook Live while my kids are in <laughs> on spring break. So anyway, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.